Um, no, I didn't undergo any formal training. There, um, there is um, no place where you can formally train for the theatre if you're acting in English. Uh, then, I mean, of course, there is NSD in Delhi, but if you're at Bombay, there isn't. And I lived all my life in Bombay. Uh, but I had the good fortune to do many workshops with many, um, uh, I think, the best, the best directors in the world. Uh, Simon McBurney from uh, Theatre de Complicité, Peter Brook, who of course made Mahabharat, yes. uh, Muthu Swami, um, Vijaya Mehta, Bansi Kol, and a host of other Indian directors who worked with us in a wonderful uh, workshop called An Actor at Work. Nasiruddin Shah. So, I actually learned and observed many different techniques of acting and today I conduct my own workshops and I've sort of taken stuff from all these various okay. workshops and created my own model. I think a workshop makes you humble all over again. A workshop puts you in a room with other people where you are, you have to uh, dissolve your ego and respond to the exercise given to you. You have to forget about the fear of being bad because after 10 years of being an actor, you don't want anybody to criticize you. So it's a very, very um, refreshing experience to revisit yourself, let go of your fears and, and learn. The older you get, the reason, it, the reason it becomes difficult to learn is because you don't want to fail or you don't want to be seen to be failing. So workshop just takes away all those inhibitions. I mean, I was doing Midnight Children, mm -hmm. and we did a workshop for seven, ten days, and there were all the actors sitting together. So the, how you responded to the exercise, you were being judged. It was clear that you were being judged as to how well you did it versus how well. And this is human nature. But it was okay, you know. I mean, you got to, you got to, you got to. Stop it, You just, you, yeah, you can't fear, and you can't, uh, you can't stand in ego. You have to grow. So, I have done my first song in uh, Zoyatra's film Dil Jaratne Do and then I have to dance and very briefly but it's terrifying because you don't want to be bad and you don't want to do something that you're bad at so you pretend you don't like it but the fact is you're saying you don't like it because you're scared so I just had to get rid of my fears and for five nights I just kept dancing You're just putting yourself out there Yeah so what doesn't scare you doesn't make you grow and I'm not interested in staying safe. Broadly speaking there are two ways which is outward in and inward out. Which is you understand the psychology of the human being and who the human being is and uh, what his thinking is like and then you say okay now I'm playing a sweeper or I'm playing a cricketer. But the human being doesn't change. The exposition of how that human being will play cricket what kind of batsman he will be, what kind of sweeper he will be, what kind of tailor he will be, will depend from the inside, what kind of human being he is. The other, the other way is the Brando way, which is from the outside in. Sorry, the Olivia way. This is the Brando way. Well, I'm just giving you rough. Yeah. So, Olivia would go outward in. He would say, what does he do? He sweeps. Okay, so what does he wear? He's barefoot. He, okay, he walks on without any shoes. He sweeps with his right hand. He works with his, with his body bent. He spends 12 hours a day sweeping. He is obviously way down the caste ladder. So all those factors would then inform the kind of human being and his behavior. His behavior would be meek, submissive, not challenging, and his eyes would always look down, etc, etc. And he would work inwards. Mm -hmm. Then if you said that he is angry, he is frustrated, dissatisfied, then he would build that in later. As far as I'm concerned, I, you know, I don't have any rules, I, I can do both. So I do a mixture of both, but what I do most is what I call the biography method. Which is I create a biography of the character from the day he's born to the moment he starts the movie. During the movie, I don't care. Hmm. The moment he starts the film. So, the school he went to, the city he grew up in, what kind of food he ate, uh, what's his sex life, what are his sexual predilections, what are his parents like. What music uh, does he listen to? What sports does he play? Does he play any sport? Does he have a physical deformity? Etc. 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 So I just I build with the director. I first look at the script and I get a lot of cues from the script, and then I build in with the director. 
work, I fill in the blanks with the director. A couple of roles were especially difficult. I am when I played homosexual who gets uh, degraded by the police. I don't know if you've seen it by a policeman, and he's forced to fillet the policeman uh, so that he can get away once he's caught. I think that was really difficult because the larger emotion to play there was degradation and humiliation in public, and it's just. Nobody, as an actor, as a human being, I don't want to visit that. So to visit that space was very difficult. Because we keep our dignity. Our dignity is most important. It's, it's like walking off a railway station and somebody just takes all your clothes off, slaps you 30 times and starts abusing you and people are laughing. That's the kind of nightmare mm -hmm. that we don't want to have. So it's tough. It's tough to go to that place. Being a homosexual, kissing a man for, I was kissing Arjun for about two minutes, those are things that, you know, were strange. To kiss a man with sticky hair and smoke on his breath or stubble. It's weird, but it's not unknowable. Mm -hmm. But the spaces that the road put me into in other ways, the humiliation, the degradation, that was tough. The other role that I found that was very, very challenging was the Japanese one. It's no coincidence that I think these two films are my best work. Japanese wife, I was terrified. I didn't think I. I mean, I was playing a villager from a small village in the Sundarbans. So, Bengali was different. Even when he spoke English, in fact, his English was tougher because he spoke English so badly that for me to do that was a real challenge. Uh, getting into this. Understanding the character, I had to pull from many different people, from the father from the films I had seen, um, from a certain lack of athleticism, I had to put on 6-7 kilos on my stomach. It was just, all of that, I mean, it's just difficult to understand the, to, to, to breathe him. It's okay, I could have pretended to be him, but to breathe him would have been very difficult. And I found him only the day before the shoot, after two months of trying. The day before the shoot, I, I found him and I was in the cycle in the middle of the afternoon in Calcutta with the dhoti and the kurta and I was on, my, on the cycle cycling and I began to figure him out. I began, the way he cycled I began to figure him out. That it was like breathing. His, his cycling was the most effortless because he's so unathletic that his well, whatever he does is effortless. Mm -hmm. he, he cannot make any effort. He doesn't understand the world. So that's my dream. I've never had it. And so at one point I was flirting with Hamlet, but I'm too old for Hamlet. Anymore. But it, it's not even, you know, like if I revisit Hamlet now, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's not a dream, bro. It's great. You know, it's not a dream. So I should now fix my sights on King Lear. Never stop acting. Never stop acting. Never stop. And how Whether you, uh, you don't have to wait for a movie or a play, you can do a street play, you can. Put yourself on camera, you can put it up on the, the web, you can go viral, you can do a solo act, you can go into a little comedy store in Bombay, Bangalore, wherever, do some stand up, do your own routine, just never ever stop acting. Keep at it. I'd like to think you'd really be writing or architecture. Architecture. Yeah. Architect is something that really interests me, the whole yeah. idea of spatial dynamics, yeah, yeah. how spaces. Uh, are either hostile or conducive to human beings and how human beings shape spaces after they're made. The whole idea that relationship between spaces and human beings, I like that a lot. I don't think I would have had the academic rigor to actually study architecture. But writing is something very easy to say because everybody fancies him or herself to be a writer. But maybe, yeah, maybe that would have been something that, since I was a copywriter in advertising, maybe I might have been a piece of Depending on how my socks look, I decide which foot to put on first. It's invariably the right foot. <laughs> okay. And that socks is... have expressions. Socks have expressions. Okay, I've never heard that one before. I think style is 
a faithful expression outwards of who you are inwards. If it's anything else, it's fake. Your style has to be a very consistent, faithful representation of who you are inside. So if you don't know who you are inside, what you stand for, what you believe in, how you look at this world for all its pain and pleasure, and what you can, what where you want to belong in this world, and then even how you want to change this world, and what you want to do for that. The, the latter is not necessary, the former definitely is. If you don't understand that, there is no way people are going to be attracted to your brand of style. There's no way. 